Back in the 80s, a study found that 80% of experienced drivers believed their driving skills are better than average. Clearly, mathematically impossible, but it tells us something about confidence in one's skills. However, all survey participants had driver license and were qualified drivers. Now, when it comes to the facade industry, uh, if you ask an industry professional if they are qualified for their role, almost all would confidently say yes. Yes, I've been doing this for many years and I know what I'm doing. And in most cases, they will be right. They have years of experience to back it up. But here's a challenge. Uh, very few can point to anything other than their CV to actually prove the competence. The Building Safety Act is now challenging that, demanding that everyone in the industry, from design directors and draftspersons to sales professionals, be able to demonstrate their competence. And the issue is that formal qualifications don't exist for many of these roles. If you're a sales director or a material manufacturer or a facade estimator, there isn't a specific qualification you can point to. And it's also true that we lack standardized framework for evaluating skills and knowledge, and there is no formal benchmark for what industry professionals should know or be able to do in each role. And I've been told there are thousands of facade professionals who struggled with proving their competence because formal routes just haven't been available. But what if there was a reliable way to assess and verify this knowledge? Today, we'll talk about joint competence initiative and baseline competency assessment. The industry fully recognizes the immense challenge um, brought about by the Building Safety Act. In response, uh, leading main contractors, together with key associations, uh, specialist contractors, insurers, and material suppliers, came together to establish the Joint Competence Initiative, or JCI. The initiative was created to tackle one of the Act's core demands, developing a structured framework that defines clear levels of competence across varieties of roles within the facade industry. A white paper was drafted to outline the skills, knowledge, and qualifications levels required across a range of industry roles, from sales personnel to facade consultants and up, up to directors of specialist facade contractors. This document provides a comprehensive view of what is expected at each level. Later in the video, I'll go through uh, in more detail about the roles and levels within Bloom's taxonomy as they relate to their framework. The white paper also lists qualifications and courses available at the time. But there is an issue. Uh, the required qualifications levels for key industry roles aren't widely offered. And it's even more complicated. There is no framework to create qualifications for many common roles, like estimating design management or sales ethics. Existing qualifications like those in quantity surveying often fall short for facade specialist contractors. Many of you have seen builds of quantities with curtain wall prices in square meters rather than in screen types, or design and engineering is derived as a percentage of project value rather than uh, relative to the complexity of the project, or even worse, design is priced in pounds per square meters. You may as well price engineering work in per kilograms of facade. The industry largely relies on system manufacturers for training with much of the technical education coming through free CPDs or continuous professional development talks, often with the free lunch included. Unsurprisingly, these presentations often feel like uh, sales pitches. While CPDs can offer valuable information, they don't ensure participants truly listened or understood the material. There is very often no assessment at the end. Manufacturer CPDs focus primarily on the technical aspects of the materials they are selling. There is a noticeable lack of courses and qualifications for commercial roles, including estimating, design management. As a result, there is no structured way to assess their competence. For most professionals, becoming a facade engineer is a matter of hands-on experience, doing the job a lot, but they often lack the formal credentials to verify their expertise. To address this, JCI approached IST to develop a solution. IST started with existing courses, which already included assignments and multiple choice tests as a foundation for the baseline competency assessment. These initial questions were peer-reviewed by top industry experts with recognized qualifications and extensive experience. They not only ensured the technical accuracy, but also identified gaps in knowledge that needed assessment. Over the course of the last year, IST produced hundreds more questions to fill these gaps, creating a robust uh, baseline for the JCI assessment. 
to explain the structure of the assessment and the challenges we had to overcome, it's best to review examples of the questions at different levels of Bloom's taxonomy according to the JCI white paper parameters. Let's say we need to evaluate the baseline competence of a person who is selling brick cladding. A question, what is the size of a brick, would be appropriate at Bloom's taxonomy level 1. Remember, you would expect a salesperson who sells brick to know what is the standard size of the product they sell. The question is suitable for learning and teaching. However, it's debatable if the question is good for evaluating the competence. Questions in level 1 of Bloom's taxonomy are so easy to solve with just looking up on the internet or simply asking ChatGPT. We can make the question more difficult by putting the brick in the context and ask what is the brick dimension. The candidate will also need to be aware of the more to join size. And because it is an image-based question, uh, a free version of ChatGPT may already struggle with it. However, uh, this is still level one question, and according to JCI white paper, all sales staff who are selling products and services should demonstrate their level at uh, competence level two. By asking which of the shown elements are responsible for structural performance of the masonry brick facade, we can test candidates' knowledge at level two, understand, or as JCI put it, ability to explain concepts and uses of products. Indeed, a salesperson should be able to explain how a standard masonry brick wall with a drain cavity works, how it is supported structurally, and how it is drained. So this question is compliant with JCI white paper parameters and is virtually impossible for AI to solve. Well, not just yet. We have tested that. So we can conclude that a question like that is suitable to evaluate JCI role a commercial sales at Bloom Taxonomy level 2, right? Right. But what if it is a glass salesperson? Well, this question is no longer appropriate. A different question related to their area of expertise is required at level two or three. In this case, this question relates to glazing unit parameters. And we have understood this at a very early stage, that the baseline competency test should be split not only per role, but also per area of expertise, at least at lower levels of competence. And it's clear that there will not be just one test to suit all roles at all levels. And we need a variety of tests to cover all areas of expertise at lower levels. Meaning that we will have to generate hundreds uh, more or perhaps even thousands of these questions. Having said that, there are areas of knowledge that all sales and marketing personnel should know. And it's possible to test this knowledge at level one or two of Loom's taxonomy. For example, a fire classification, uh, on materials and materials reaction to fire for various uh, projects, heights, and building queues. But what we also realized that it can be one test to evaluate the competency of practitioners on higher levels. Here is an example of level three question, or as JCI white paper puts it, being able to apply knowledge uh, to actual situations. A design manager working uh, for a main contractor should know the aspects of all materials and systems, and they should be able to apply the knowledge of the brick dimensions and figure out the dimensions of the opening. But what if it's not stretcher bond, uh, but for example, Flemish bond? The question becomes more difficult. However, the knowledge level, according to Bloom's taxonomy, remains the same, and it's still level three, apply. Here we already can see that the difficulty of the test does not necessarily correlate to the level of knowledge tested. And the question is already at the level of complexity that ChatGPT or another similar large language model is unable to solve. And it appears to be appropriate and suitable for uh, assessing candidates' knowledge. Staying on the topic of brick cladding, let's look at examples of level four questions on masonry um, lintel arrangement. Level four is analysis or being able to break down information into component parts. Option A, it doesn't meet the requirement as the lintel should be set out to ensure that lintels bear on a full masonry unit. Option B also does not meet all the requirements because lintels should extend beyond the opening at each end by a minimum of 150 millimeters. And we can see this is not shown here on this diagram. Option C does not meet the requirement um, because lintels should not have brickwork or masonry which overhangs more than 25 millimeters. Option D doesn't meet a requirement because each opening should have at least two weep holes above the lintels. Option F does not meet all the requirements as the cavity trace should be uh, shaped to provide at least 100 mm minimum vertical projection above points where the mortar droppings could collect. 
and option E meets all the requirements. And according to JCI white paper, questions at level 4 and 5 should be suitable for evaluating competence of uh, design managers, project leads, and directors. But then again, it is debatable if a director of curtain wall contractor should be well versed in the brick cladding, or the diagrams may be too difficult to read, or the question could be too difficult. But this question could be potentially suitable for junior facade engineer. So let's look at how the multiple choice questions would look like if, they, if we were to test a design manager's ability to evaluate, or as JCI uh, white paper puts it, level five, ability to make and defend judgments about the values and materials and methods of the construction. We can invite candidate to evaluate if the detail is compliant with the proof document K if a standard clay brick is used. Here the answer options are designed to confuse the candidate. One need to know that the proof document K relates to um, protection from falling, which should draw attention to the height of the balustrade. And one need to know the brick dimension to de derive the height of the balustrade and evaluate the balustrade compliance with um, building regulation guidances. Here there are less than 14 bricks below the balustrade, meaning that the balustrade is lower than 1100 millimeters. By changing the brick bond, we can make the question even more difficult, however, it still remains at level 5. Or we can test candidates' ability to evaluate design for multiple parameters by posing a question whether the detail compliant with approved document K and M. One need to know and understand that the approved document M refers to access, and one needs to pay attention to door handle level in relation to the floor which has to be below 1100 millimeters, but no lower than 900 millimeters. However, by making questions more difficult, we are still checking the very basic knowledge of code applied to a particular situation at level five of Bloom's taxonomy. And we can, of course, make the question even more difficult by playing with the brick bond while still checking the applicable knowledge of the code. The baseline competency assessment in form of multiple choice test cannot uh, test at level six of Bloom taxonomy because JCI lists level six uh, as create research and development of methodologies and products. And this is something that IST uh, assess via assignments where we ask candidates to produce marked up drawings or diagrams. For example, um, marking up a, a location of a brick ties in certain bonds or by uh, creating a markup of the locations of cavity barriers behind race cladding. Well, we only can do it during our courses and not during the uh, multiple choice assessment. So baseline competence assessment in form of a multiple choice test may not be suitable for facade engineers or fire engineers dealing with facades. However, it should be suitable a tool for assessing competence of junior facade engineers. As you can see that the complexity of the questions and the level of the knowledge according to Bloom's taxonomy are not correlating directly. We are designing baseline competency assessment to validate specific knowledge and prior learning and not IQ or ability to reason. To ensure the fairness and appropriateness, we'll be conducting a trial assessment with the selected industry professionals. This process will help us to uh, fine-tune the questions to align with the required um, competence levels without creating unnecessary barriers. Our vision is to make this assessment available globally, accessible to all uh, professionals involved in UK projects. For accessibility, we are uh, working on delivering the assessment online with proctoring software to verify the candidate's identity. Candidates will have a set time to answer each question, just enough to analyze and respond, but not enough to consult with external tools. Each question will also include visual elements that requires focused analysis, further reinforcing the uh, integrity of the assessment and making sure that um, AI tools are not helpful in passing the test. One of the main goals is to balance rigor with accessibility. We aim to create a tool that allows professionals to validate their skills without making it overly complex or intimidating. We want this to be a practical, supportive tool for anyone seeking to demonstrate their experience and expertise. We aim for a fair, accessible and practical tool that enables professionals to prove and verify their knowledge and prior learning, helping them to understand where they are in their professional journey. After successful trials, we plan to make this assessment publicly available. Next, we will develop additional lower level assessments tailored to specific roles and areas such as sales management and estimating. 
with a focus on, on content and materials like precast concrete, masonry, rain screen and glass. We are also committed to keeping the uh, assessment cost effective, uh, recognizing the importance of making this accessible for as many professionals as possible. We are infinitely grateful to JCI Peer Review Group who have invested a tremendous amount of their volunteer time in early mornings uh, and uh, late evenings and weekends and holidays to review the, and refine and help us to create more, more than 1,000 questions um, developed for this tool. Finally, we are eager to hear your thoughts. We invite the wider industry to provide feedback and participate in trial assessment. If you would like to volunteer and help us to refine this tool, please reach out to us. After over a year of hard work, uh, we're excited for the industry to use this assessment and uh, we believe it will be an, an invaluable uh, resource for professionals to demonstrate their competence and validate their prior learning.